Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, DJ May Friday for today's second video. So as on a, as always on a Friday, we've got your month ahead look ahead with Japanese and CFSB2 uh, long range models. This is going to take us into the second half of uh, November. We've just released um, the first update for Halloween and the Bonfire Night 2. So it looks like it could be fairly seasonable actually for both Halloween and the Bonfire Night. It could be rather chilly feel, we'll have to wrap up. Put your scarf, scarf uh, coat and gloves on, perhaps. Um, so have a look, anyway, at the Halloween and Bonfire Night update uh, when you're done with this one. We'll be back, of course, later on this afternoon with your week to 10-day video update. Uh, right, then, so we're going to start off with the uh, JMA uh, month head forecast. So these are 500 millibar heights broken down into uh, weekly pairs. The first weekly pair will be taking us from today, the 25th of uh, October, through to the 1st of November. Looking at the North Pole view down, um, so the North Pole uh, of the uh, Arctic is just there. And then, of course, we've got the mid latitudes uh, of the Northern Hemisphere around there. Blue is extrapolated to below average heights, which is low pressure, and yellow, orange, and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. So for the next week, we've got a trough of low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. We've got a ridge from the south ridging uh, northwards to quite an extensive blocking feature that's around, uh, let's change colour, that's around Greenland and Iceland just here. And then there's another trough of low pressure that's extending through Scandinavia and northeast parts of Europe. That's bringing a proper bite of winter to much of north and northeastern Europe. Now, we're on the periphery of that with this uh, ridge. So I think we will bring some colder air into the UK uh, from the north, but the main body will probably go down into Scandinavia and northeastern parts of Europe. You know, nevertheless, that does look like a relatively cold, but also dryish uh, week to come. Then we go through to uh, week two. This one takes us from the 1st through to the 8th of November. And this time we have above average height sitting to our west. So sitting to west of Ireland and into the Atlantic. Below average heights over northeast Europe extending down into the east. The jet stream doing something a little bit like that. So um, probably reverting a bit more westerly there. Probably a bit less cold compared to uh, week one. Not particularly warm though, the winds are still coming in, coming from a northwesterly type direction. Fair amount of dry weather though, as the Atlantic is blocked off. And then we go through to weeks three and four. This one takes us from the uh, 8th through to the 22nd of November. Quite a complicated pattern now. So we're trying to revert into a westerly flow with below average heights around Greenland and Iceland and an area of above average heights through the middle of the Atlantic. And that's trying to bring in uh, the jet stream like that. However, it looks like the energy is becoming uh, cut off down to the south. There's this area of low pressure sitting sort of across central parts of Europe and down into Mediterranean. And the reason that's happening is that heights are rising towards Scandinavia and back into the Arctic. And that's trying to bring in cold easterly winds, particularly to northern parts of Europe. And so what's going on there is that it's actually a bit of a battle, I think, taking place with projection coming across the Atlantic like that with weather systems, but then meeting um, the block that's sitting up to the northeast. And so that's sending the energy, instead of it going sort of west to east as it would normally, it's sending the energy down here. Uh, with this low pressure end developing through central uh, parts of Europe and down into the Mediterranean. It's an interesting uh, chart. It looks like it could be just about on the cusp of bringing cold weather in from the uh, east. But um, do bear in mind it's a two-weekly anomaly, so it might be a bit transitional. Uh, and remember, Wesley's are trying to re-establish that. So that really is a case of being poised between two possible scenarios for the second half of, uh, of November, and more runs would be needed to determine where that's going. Now, have a look at temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks with a JMA. So this is a tropical uh, mid-latitude view. The UK is in the top right-hand corner of the chart, as you are looking at here. Uh, we can't see the Arctic, uh, Scandinavia, or the North Pole from here. We have a look at that view, though, so we don't need to see it again, uh, particularly that's off the chart up there. So we know that for week one, we've got this area of above-average heights 
uh, extending through the west of Europe, but also connecting back to blocking that sitting around Greenland uh, just there. So the temperature anomaly in the week ahead for Germany is actually looking a little bit colder than average. This is again uh, the coming week, 25th of November, uh, for October to the 1st of November. Slightly below average temperatures being forecast, now, which is quite unusual for the JMA to be going for uh, below average temperatures. And precipitation wise, it does look a drier week. So we aimed October on somewhat of a drier note compared to the wet weather we've had. Uh, just recently, just recently, so colder and drier for week one. Then we go through to uh, week two, which of course has the ridge out to the west of us, actually going something a little bit like that in week two from the 1st to the 8th of November. Temperature anomalies are recovering slightly, it's not particularly warm, but it's reverting back closer to average so it's a slightly less cold week for the first week of November and because the Atlantic is blocked off still relatively dry of course the issue with that with high pressure quite close to us there would be a risk of overnight frost which would probably pull the overall temperature down a little bit and then we're into weeks three and four which is the 8th through 22nd of November. It all gets rather complicated. And I say we're trying to establish or re-establish a westerly flow with high pressure around the Azores and low pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, trying to bring in those westerly winds. But we also have this low pressure just here. If I take you over to here, we have the low pressure through Central Europe down to the Central Bar of the Med. Um, we can't see Scandinavia and up to our northeast, but we know that there is a ridge that's lurking up here that is probably trying to get the wind if you come over here probably trying this ridge that will be up there is probably trying to get wind into the east temperature anomalies therefore for weeks three and four from the 8th through 22nd of november are close to average it's a bit cold average to our west also looks a little bit cold and average there for central parts of europe precipitation anomalies uh, so still rather on the dry side, it could be a relatively dry November after the October deluge. Uh, it's a bit wet average up to our northwest, central parts of Europe and down to Mediterranean. Go from being a bit dry on average there to a bit wet average into Med. A bit inconclusive uh, for weeks three and four. I think it will be a case of watch your space, see what happens there. To me, it looks like the Germany is hinting at a battle between high pressure to the northeast around Scandinavia and going up into the um, up into a Svalbard, those sort of areas, high pressure up there, trying to pull in east or northeasterly winds the second half of the month against low pressure in the Atlantic, trying to establish a westerly or re-establish a westerly flow. So it's inconclusive, um, but it's quite a quite an interesting pattern. It certainly doesn't look typically zonal. Uh, this is how CFSV2 is looking for the next four weeks. So again, these are 500 millibar heights. They're broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 25th of October to the 31st of the month. So the uh, coming week has blocking around green, the blocking area with high pressure there, with a trough of low pressure extending through northeastern parts of Europe, that's bringing cold air, that sort of direction. We do also have low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic there, and we have a ridge around Spain and in central parts of Europe, but of course it is trying to bring up much warmer air, milder air, or warmer air from the south and from the southwest. But for us actually, I think we're pulling in those cold winds from the northeast in the week ahead, so a pretty chilly week to end October. That's how we look in week two, which is the 1st to the 7th of November. A little bit different to what the JMA is showing here. But that deep trough is extending into Scandinavia, covering much of Northern Europe. Blocking is still there around Greenland, and it extends down towards Iceland into the middle of the Atlantic as well. This definitely leaves us looking cold through the first week of uh, first week of November, and potentially a little bit on the wintry side. Actually, I, I think there will be the chance of wintry showers certainly for northeastern parts of the country, and we are sort of on the cold side of the jet stream. So a pair of cold weeks there through for the final week of October and the first week of November. Then we get through to week three, which is the 8th to the 14th of November. Low pressure is up around Greenland and Iceland now, so we've lost northern blocking from Greenland, but it's still there uh, to the north of Scandinavia, so kind of like up towards Svalbard and then back in towards the Arctic. 
uh, with a ridge extending through western parts of Europe. Now, that would probably be quite a cold ridge. Uh, so it's been inconclusive again. It's rather a strange-looking pattern. The flow of the jet will probably be doing something a little bit like that. We may be taking some of the energy down in that direction. So it's not a million miles away from what uh, the JMA was showing, actually. And then into week four, which is the 15th to 21st of November, the height sort of strengthened to our northeast. Low pressure is still around Greenland. Uh, so with this one, we're probably bringing in sort of southeasterly type winds. Close that ridge of high pressure, though. I think that's quite a cold ridge, I have to say. I don't think that would be a warm ridge at all. I think that would be a pretty cold ridge. And um, so going into the second half of November, perhaps cold and dry is uh, is the way this is shaping up. These are these are quite um, interesting charts. They're quite unusual what we're seeing here with both the JMA and the CFS as we're going into November. And they both look a far cry from the typical westerly zonal pattern that you would expect in November. And uh, that you would uh, that a lot of the long range model output at the moment has been forecasting. Of course. Uh, so this is how the temperature normally looks for week one, which is 25th of October to 31st. Uh, cold of an average, a below average week coming up temperature-wise. Look how cold it is over in America as well. Really, really cold over most of, uh, not only North America, but also back into Canada as well. So properly plunged into uh, winter there across large parts of the states. Only this far eastern, southeastern part is looking relatively warm. Then we go through to uh, week two, which is the 1st and the 7th of November, still below average temperatures in week two. Most parts of Europe also looking really quite cold indeed. So that's a cold start to November, not just for the UK, but for most parts of Europe. Many parts of America still looking quite cold, especially so in the east and the southeast now. So looks quite cold on both sides of the Atlantic there through the first week of November. Week two is, week three, I should say, is the 8th to the 14th of November. Uh, temperature goes closer to average. Uh, it's not warm but it, or mild, but it does go closer to average. And then week four, which is the 15th to 21st of November, that hints are going a little bit above average. That's that high pressure is building in. But to me, that high pressure looks like it's a cold ridge. At the very least, I think it will produce frost and fog night and morning. And in November, that fog can linger on all day. I reckon that's quite a cold November that we're beginning to see hints of here within both the JMA and the CFS, certainly, certainly the first half of it. Precipitation wise, so um, this is week one, 25th of October to the 31st, drive an average to our north, wet of an average down to the south of the country. Week two is the 1st and 7th of November. That one is average with uh, precipitation. Week three is the uh, 8th through to the 14th of uh, November. That one is also close to average. Week four, which is the 15th to 21st of November, hints at being a little bit drier than average with high pressure course in control to our northeast. Quite an interesting update from JMA Friday this month. It's a far cry from the zonal weather that you would expect in November. And it's also a far, far cry from the zonal weather that most of the long range seasonal models have been forecasting um, for the end of the year. So quite where this is going, I'm not sure. But between the JMA and the CFS, I think they could be hinting uh, a rather cold November, potentially the first half of it anyway. Of course, the second half is only just we're just going into the second half with these updates, um, with these models. So uh, we probably will know more on that next week. But certainly I think they are hinting at quite a coldish first half to uh, November with an absence of zonality. So we shall see. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what these models are showing. Uh, they could all look very different next week. Any forecast, particularly a model-based forecast, beyond uh, sort of five to seven days is fraught with uh, danger and has a big health warning about it. So uh, we shall see. We'll be back later on this afternoon with your week's 10-day video updates. So come back for that then. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.